This actually happened a few hours ago, and I'm still unsettled about the whole encounter. I decided to drop it over here to get it out of my system. I've had creeps tailgate me to try and grab my attention on the road, and I just ignore them, which always worked, but this guy takes a golden medal. My shift starts at the afternoon, and I was feeling off for most of the day. A beautiful sunny day, mind you. You know one of those days where you drag yourself out of your bed to do adulting? I decided to lift my mood up so I wore something new that I had. A beautiful creamy white faux fur vest, and I hit the road. I look like a million bucks and feel like a million bucks. I played some piano tracks and hoped that I would get out of this funk. I just needed something to comfort me, and these two things didn't cut it. While I was driving to work, I decided to grab a drink. An iced crisp green tea will definitely lift my spirit. There were two branches of a famous coffee shop, you know who, a grinning mermaid who's playing Twister. I could have gone to the first one with the drive through but they use a pretty crappy tea brand as they ran out of the good stuff. So, I had to go to the one that was inside a mall. I parked my car and I saw a private fleet of black SUVs making it difficult to view the entrance. This is important later. I grabbed a cold bottle of water and headed to the counter. I paid for my drink and got a cherry lollipop. I waited for my drink and once I got it I started walking out. I had to pass a fountain in the courtyard before I could reach the exit. I slowed my pace as I noticed that I was walking too fast. I felt a bit off but brushed it off initially. As I passed between the SUVs a bus shot through quickly. I stepped back in shock as I almost walked directly into its path. This didn't make me realize what was happening as I got distracted and wasn't aware of my surroundings. As I walked further I had to pass an area where there wasn't anyone. It was shaded but still outdoor. It was almost like under a bridge style building if that makes sense. This was a way to my car. I noticed that I wasn't aware of my surroundings until I heard footsteps on my right. Then I saw a man in my peripheral vision walking and matching my speed. At first I thought he was in a uniform, so I assumed he was part of the cleaning staff inside the mall. I felt off but I told myself that I was being paranoid and just overthinking the situation. Next to my car and on the left side was a woman with a child who was getting into their car. This will make sense later. I was sandwiched between my car and hers. I was getting my keys out of my fur vest. Then I had to turn around in order to open my driver door, as I was a bit ahead of it. Once I turned, I saw a man standing, looked like in his late thirties, skinny average height. He had a dark blue baseball cap with sunglasses, a gray shirt with some print on it, and black sweatpants. The man was also wearing Crocs with socks. Wrap your head around that for a second. He was so close that it took me by surprise and I was startled, but being nice and polite is in my blood, so I assume nothing. The first thing that he said was, Why are you afraid? I told him that I wasn't and asked him what he wanted. Is your car for sale? He said while grinning. I reply calmly, no it's not. Then he started to ask about how my day was going and stuff along those lines. I thought, what the hell? I don't know you. Alarm bells were ringing in my head. I smiled as to not escalate the situation. I knew I had to do something and do it fast. The man was blocking my way to the mall entrance, and if I decided to go the other way, which is a pretty large shaded parking lot with few people here and there. It was nice to meet you, but I have to leave, I said while smiling. Give me your phone number. He said bluntly. I just repeated the same phrase and took a step closer to the door, as I didn't want to show him that I was afraid. I was honestly shitting myself at this moment. Then he said something that made me want to crawl out of my skin. Give me your phone number, 
so I don't have to chase you around in my car. At this moment I knew I had to move fast, so I opened my door and ignored him. He kept talking, and I wasn't sure what he was saying as it felt muffled. My anxiety was higher than a tip of Mount Everest right now, and I was hit with the realization that even in public spaces and in broad daylight with people around, you can lose your sense of safety in a split second. I closed the door quickly and locked it. My fingers felt weak, but I managed to turn on my car. He kept knocking on my window. He was so insistent. I put my car in reverse, but I couldn't back out. The woman was halfway getting out of her parking place, thus forcing me to wait. He kept pounding on the window harder and yelling even more bizarre things at me. At that moment, I honestly couldn't hear him. All I wanted to do was nope out of there. I was so afraid and just baffled. I avoided making eye contact with him. Once the road was clear, I hit the gas pedal and sped off. I drove to a random place while my eyes were fixed on my rear view mirror to make sure he wasn't following me. It was so hard to breathe as my chest felt so heavy and my heart was beating out of my chest. I was glad he wasn't there. This creep followed me around the mall and waited for the right moment. I was all alone. Hello all. I'm a 28 year old female and this story occurred years ago. I hope you guys enjoy reading this as much as I did writing and sharing it. Let's just say my name is Jenna for the story's sake. I haven't been back to the same place since and I always share this story with my friends. It has become a favorite, whether they believe me or not. This is somewhat of a throwaway account because I don't want to be pinned down to where I'm located. I usually visit my family's cottage up north. I'm not going to disclose specifically where for privacy reasons. It's a waterfront cottage facing a lake surrounded by a dense forest. It's located on a private beach, so you could see your neighbor every once in a while. Everyone comes up north around the same time, so wouldn't be uncommon to have a chat with others and thus, everyone knows each other, and subsequently, their business. My cottage sits between two others. One is inhabited quite frequently, and one is abandoned to my knowledge. My family and neighbors know that the European family that owns it. I just assume that they hold on to the property to maintain some sort of tangible asset in the US. Back when I was young, around the age of 18 to 20, my cousins, brothers, and I would get away from our family to smoke weed in the abandoned cottage. It was fun, an empty cottage with some furniture that was a time capsule from the 1980s. We would peer around and look at the old brown love seat, the dark den, the main living room adjoining the dining area, and the cute little kitchen with old wine glasses laying around. It was resoundingly acknowledged that others had been through the abandoned cottage as well. There were smoke joints on the ground, footprints, old beer bottles with modern labels, and furniture was always moved around from one position to the other. However, the cottage was never spruced up, it was never cleaned nor organized, so we knew that the owners weren't coming by. It was random explorers doing the same thing we were doing. Upon some curious investigation, we saw a basement. We opened the door and saw a staircase that led to a floor that was purely dirt. It looked like a cellar from what I could see. I stood at the top of the stairs looking down and saw exposed brick, nothing particularly interesting at first. Of course we would freak each other out, saying someone lives down there and that there was a serial killer living there or there was a corpse collection buried under the dirt floors. So, none of us would go down there with our independent conviction. It would have to have been a dare or a display of bravery. One day around Thanksgiving, four of us, three girls and my brother, went to the abandoned cottage to smoke some joints and gossip about family. I don't see my cousins much, only during special occasions, 
so we sat on the tables in the dining area to smoke and chill and chit-chat. Of course, the topic of the basement always comes up. We laughed and talked about who would go down there, who would most likely survive the serial killer beneath us, or who his next victim would be. We turned to notice the basement was unlocked, and this was unusual, since it was always locked. And I mean always. The one occasion where it was unlocked was when we took a look, or one of my brothers would go down there to freak out all the girls and prove his macho, so to speak. We would always lock it afterwards, purely out of the feeling of some sort of reassurance. We chalked it up to other teenagers just like us having visited the cottage before, and all of us girls made my older brother get up and lock the door. He stood looked us all up and down and jokingly said something along the lines of, You guys are just pussies. Always get a man to do the scary shit for you. We laughed, but he was a guy. If there was someone down there, he would be the most likely to defend himself. He's a big guy at six foot five, two 210 pounds. He took maybe three steps before there was a knock. It sounded like a knock on a hollow surface. Considering that this cottage was quite old, I thought that it came from the side of the building. I don't think there is any significant insulation that would prevent an audible knock. I instantly look at my brother who looks smug. He said, You know, if you ask me to do something for you, don't fuck with me while I'm doing you a favor. I looked around waiting for one or two of the other girls to fess up and mock his masculine courage. It seemed like everyone was resoundingly confused, anxious and waiting for the same thing. I guess my brother saw their reactions but did not see mine and concluded that I was a source of the suspicious knocker since my back was turned to him. Very funny, Jenna. You think you're such a joker, my brother said with a chuckle. I turned to him and I guess he saw my anxious face as well. I guess he could read me. I thought that maybe him walking on the old floors unsettling some of the structural integrity of the building caused the sound. Maybe it was one of his parents messing with us. I didn't think it was from a foreign source. I quipped at him, just go and lock the door. He continued walking towards the door but it opened slightly. He stopped dead in his tracks. We're going now. Screw that door, one of my cousins sternly said. We all got up from sitting on the tables. We gathered our things including weed, beer bottles, and phones. We quickly ran to the front door, not daring to look back. My brother was the last of the anxious Congo line that was created by the bottleneck of the lone exit. I heard significant footsteps coming from the back of the cottage. I thought it was my brother, and I turned back and I swear to God I saw a hand opening the basement door. Oh my God, I yelled. There's someone in the basement, I managed to shakingly say after running down the stairs that led to the front door. What? Everyone else said. My brother looked back. Holy shit! He held onto the sides of my arms to push me faster and faster. Go! We heard a foreign voice say. We ran so fast that our flip-flops flew off. I knew it wasn't any of us, not even one of our parents. The voice was completely foreign and unfamiliar. We made our escape to our cottage thoroughly flustered and terrified. There was a homeless guy in there. I saw him. My brother, out of breath, managed to say. I guess it was common knowledge that the place was abandoned. I wouldn't neglect the possibility of someone taking refuge in there. I don't know if the guy went into the basement when he heard us coming, then got tired of sitting on the dirt floor and decided to scare us. I don't know. It's a private beach, so you would have to know the specific location to be able to understand how to get there, then also that there is an abandoned property as well. I also know that there are squatters. To offer a further explanation, people share on Reddit that there are certain locations in our area where you could set up camp on a vacant lot and take a day to sit on the quiet beach.
but I know that the neighboring properties crack down on it pretty quickly, and I let them know that they can't settle there. I thought that would have been a good explanation. This story takes place five years ago. At the time, I was 14 and had been a Boy Scout since I was 11. Sorry if it feels weird, but I try to remember it and tell it as best as possible. Anyways, it was on summer holiday. We were usually two weeks in the wild doing scouting stuff. We get to know other scout troops from other parts of the country. It's generally a really good time to meet new people. This time we met with three other groups and we'll spend three weeks together. For the record, I was with the two other guys of my group and we shared the tent together. The days go on and one of my friends has a crush on a girl. One day he invites her to our tent on the evening to have some fun playing cards and telling jokes. She agrees. On that evening she snuck up to our tent and came with her friends. Now let me introduce you to Mia. Anyways, we had a good time during the night and a couple hours later they both left. During the time at camp, a good friend of mine Lisa had a crush on Mia who was also into her. It was a happy moment for everyone. The day goes on and Mia gets a little weird and talks alone to people who aren't in the camp. As the time goes on, rumors say that Mia tried to commit suicide in the forest. A kid saw her trying to strangle herself with her belt. After that, they alerted the adults and they were going to pick her up and take her home. She was gone for a couple of days and everything went back to normal. Little did we know that Mia was back in the camp as other younglings saw her in the forest, saying things in the forest like, I want to see Lisa, while holding a knife. At that moment, everyone was scared as shit. The adults decided to dress up a big tent and put us all inside while we waited for Mia to show up. Eventually, she showed up, saw us, and ran straight towards us with her knife in a hand. It happened so quickly, but I still remember it. One of the adults managed to tackle her down and made sure that she wouldn't get up. The story is nearly to an end as the police took Mia, followed by her parents, and it was the last time we ever saw her. I heard she was diagnosed with schizophrenia, and she's now in a clinic with people there that can help her. Lisa is still traumatized by these events. One thing that burns in her is that her name is one letter apart from Mia's name. People sometimes mispronounce it and makes her recall these events. Thank you guys for watching and listening to the very end. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please do so now. Please leave a like on the video and be sure to comment in the comment section. If you want your story featured on an upcoming video, email it to my email in the description box below. Until we meet again, stay sinful.